So today I'm going to pr present um, um, one piece from a series I wrote uh, called The Heirs of the Fifteen States. Uh, ever since my childhood, um, I was struck by the great beauty of the, the book of the poet, uh, Shi Jing. Um, and after I started learning Gu Qin, I also learned that, you know, Confucius used to use Gu Qin to play with the recitation of the book of poet, a uh, book of uh, poetry, uh, Shi Jing, you know, 300 pieces. And um, uh, presumably, you know, he was using Gu Qin, you know, like what we learn from the the Ming Dynasty, uh, Gu Qin song, that, you know, one word for one note, uh, that kind of fashion. So, but, uh, um, I start thinking about, you know, the great beauty of the words in the book of poem, um, and the great beauty of Gu Qin. Certainly, you know, I don't think playing one note for one character that kind of Qin song it has its own beauty but I kept thinking how could Gu Qin you know just as a solo instrument as a, is creating that kind of instrumental pieces that can um, you know not rival but at least capture some of the beauty in the pure words I like something that is pure I don't like combining words with uh, music. I like to appreciate the pure beauty of the pure words in the book of poetry, and I also like to appreciate the pure beauty of just a Guqin sound. Um, and indeed, I think Guqin has the potential to capture the imagery and the sound, you know, the um, book of the poems from from the um, from Shi Jing is very rich in both visual imagery and uh, acoustic. Uh, you know, there are bird sound. You know, the very first one is acoustic, right? Guan Guan Ju Jiu is the the bird sound, and then um, you read Zhong uh, Gu Lao Zhi. You know, the bell and drum, or the Qin and the Se. And it is also rich in, in color. Um, there are studies of different plants in the book of poem and, and different utensils, etc. and etc. So it's, it's very rich. And uh, I think Guqin um, has the potential. So that's my first thought. Um, pure instrumental Guqin sound capture some of the beauty of those pure beauty in pure words. Second thinking, you know, I, I agree with uh, both Stephen and Marilyn um, in the significance of um, fingering, right? Uh, like Marilyn uh, said, you know, Guqin student start with the Guqin traditional notation. It's the fingering. I totally agree with that. I think that is really the core, the spirit of Guqin. Uh, it is richer than any other notation. No notation can capture the richness of Gu Qin Jian Zi Pu, the fingering. Every pitch notation is a simplification. Every pitch notation is a simplification and impoverishment for the Gu Qin Jian Zi Pu fingering notation. Because when Gu Qin Jian Zi Pu tells you to do certain movement, there are a lot of um, something I call designed unexpected. Some sounds are not expected, not uh, consciously produced, but they are designed. Because of the movement, you create a lot of sliding, a lot of, kind of percussionist sound, and also a lot of additional sound and because the way you touch the string, for example, you do Gun Fu, you do Gun Fu, 
no pitch notation can capture that because you know when I press my hand on the fourth string, my thumb is loosely touching the fifth string. So maybe accidentally touching the the sixth string. So the sixth string might create a harmonic, while the others are are uh, open string, and the fifth string is only loosely touched. So it created a kind of a um, not bright, but that kind of that kind of sound. And then um, the sixth string might accidentally produce a harmonic, and then the other strings are and are um, open string. And then the fourth string I press on the ninth way, it produces that. So those are accidentals. And uh, sometimes they produce, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they come out, sometimes time they don't. So there are, a lot of those effects are unexpected, but I would call it a designed and expected. Right? It is designed so. Uh, you can let the player produce those sequence of the, the notes in a different way, and it will produce different um, unexpected. Or, you know, if it indicates you after you play this, and it indicates you play a chore on the ninth way, so you have to slide down lower than the ninth way and then come back, and that creates a very different sliding. But if it tells you to play a ju, then you don't produce that. Right. So those are not, cannot be notified in any pitch notation. It is um, not in your consciousness, but I would argue that that unconscious, you know, unexpected, accidental effects are somehow designed. You can design that. You know, if you play according to the fingering, then you would produce some of those um, accidental kind of unexpected, unnotif un, um, unnotable um, effect. So I, I totally agree uh, that Jian Zipu should really be the key. So um, <clears throat> that's why in my um, 56 Guqin studies, uh, the book I published in 2019, in the introduction, I raised the concept of fingering motif. Um, we know that in Western music, uh, there are motifs, there are themes, but when we talk about, you know, the motif of bang, 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 so it is, it is pitch, it is, it is certain melody, right? It doesn't matter which instrument produce it, it might be produced, you know, um, by the horn or the strings, um, you know, or you know, the, the, um, the flute. It certainly doesn't matter how you produce it on your instrument. But fingering motif is different. Um, it, is, it has nothing to do with melody. It has something to do, it has everything to do with fingering pattern. So, um, and my Guqin studies focus on those fingering motif. For example, um, <clears throat> you know, this is a fingering motif. So um, it might produce a different thing. It's a different melody, but it's pretty much the same fingering motif. If I pr pr produce it on a uh, ninth way, so it's a certain kind of uh, combination. And uh, you can also, um, <clears throat> it also doesn't matter how, what rhythm you give it. Um, it's, um, it's okay too, right? And um, so my idea is, you know, I wanted to use this fingering motif for the poem I choose from the book of, book of poetry and limit the number of fingering motif. Like in uh, Western music, you know, the, 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 the melodic motif, you, know, you can have development, you can have um, contrast, right? 
So the fingering motif, I use a certain kind of fingering pattern, limit the number of fingering I use in a certain piece to give consistency and um, uh, harmony to that piece of music. And then try to explore different potential of that fingering combination. combination. So basically, <clears throat> it generates sometimes the melody you don't recognize, but uh, you still feel um, it, it is just a uh, scattering kind of material of, of sound. Uh, so basically, that's the technical concept behind the composition of this. So it's called the heirs of the 15 states because all the poems are chosen from the feng part, the feng ya and the song, the three part of the book of poetry. But you know, I choose those from the feng, that is air, the air of the 15 states, which is mostly collected from the countryside, while the ya and the song are mostly um, ceremonial, ritual music played during the um, sacrifice to ancestor, to God, kind of more um, ritualistic. Um, and uh, I composed some of them, and some of them are collected in the uh, study of fingering because each one um, kind of focus on a, a type of fingering, trying to explore the potential of a certain fingering motif. And uh, some of the pieces are just using harmonics, and some of the pieces use a lot of uh, yen, uh, for example. So, um, and the one I'm going to play today is the, um, the very first in the book of poetry, Guan Ju, uh, Guan Christ the Osprey. And um, so, um, well, I think I, I might play first. And uh, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the, that poem, you know what imagery, what sound are in that poetry and see if, um, if I somehow capture that or, um, or not. So. <laughs> Um, I, I just heard um, the kid, I, if you, if you um, excuse me for just five seconds, I will tell them not to open the door to, to break in all right, during my play. As some of you can see, I'll speak while Shui Shan is away. There's an active chat going on about how to use the word tablature. And I only wanted to interrupt Stephen to say that the word tablature should pre be preceded by Gu Qin tablature, so that we don't get it mixed up with the tablature of Western notation. So I just use tablature exclusively with fingering, and Treshan is calling it fingering. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, because I, I, you know, uh, after playing for a while, I noticed that there are a lot of um, patterns. You know, it's, there are a lot of similar combination of fingers is, that appeared in many, many different. Uh, for example, you know, everyone might have played um, Qiu Feng Ci. So, uh, and then it goes up to the nine, five, five, fifth string. It's the same thing. It's just a play on different string, playing using the same fingering combination. So I call it fingering motif. Um, and uh, so, um, and um, I also use that fingering motif concept to analyze Gucci music because once you you find out what is the typical fingering combination in a piece, you notice that it is everywhere. And there are just different variations of that same thing appearing again and again. And it produced very different melody. So it is very different from the, um, the standard music motif we, we talk about um, Beethoven or Mozart.
beautiful. Oh, thank you. It's, it's so, um, I, um, I wonder if um, someone recognizes some of the um, imagery or, or sound of that, um, of that poem. I was wondering, uh, is it a complete work yet, this composition? Um, yeah, <clears throat> um, this is the, um, of this piece, yes, the whole series, of course, has how many, 12, something, I didn't write for all 15 states, uh, I choose a few, so, um, and, um, um, seven of them, I think, is published in, <clears throat> in, in my 56 studies, and this one is one of them. So um, the total um, performance of the whole series might take like um, half an hour. So this is the like the opening piece, and it's also the first poem in in Shijing. And the reason why I'm asking because uh, when I you were finishing up, I didn't recognize that that was the ending of the section or the piece. So it didn't end like a conventional chin piece. So I was wondering, is it supposed to directly connect to the next piece or is it standalone in other words? Yeah, that's the idea. So um, I basically, I sequenced, um, sequenced the, um, the series. So the next one, um, it, is, it is indeed. So it is it better to connect with the, <clears throat> the next one. Um, it's called, the next one is the Cedar Boat, uh, Bozhou, um, so it's called the Cedar Boat, um, that one, and um, so, so yes, um, but um, um, I did intend to, yeah, maybe it's not a full cadence in the Western terminology, it's a kind of a, a half cadence, and uh, uh, it, it is, yeah, I, I didn't give it a sense of like, a full completion. Uh, so I think you are totally right. You feel, you know, it should be picked up by something. Uh, well, it's continuous. It's part of a suite, is what you're saying. Right. What, what's clear to me was the, the sense of folk melodies in it. You have rhythmic structures and um, themes that are very comfortable, very, very familiar. I didn't have the poems in front of me, so I'd have to go back and look at and look at your pool. But I just yeah. loved it. Everybody, the reaction is very positive in, in all the oh, chat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe you know one. <clears throat> some of them, um, like the poem, talk about um, a gentleman thinking about a beautiful lady, and he. He toss on the bed, cannot sleep, right? Chan Duan Fan So that's one word verse in, in the poem. Yu Zai Yu Zai Chan Duan Fan So he, he toss and turn uh, in the bed and cannot sleep. Um, so um, the first part of that part, at, you know, when I composed that part, I'm, I was thinking of that section, like this part. So it's not as rhythmic. It's kind of has a lot of hesitation, and has some kind of a um, uh, uncomfortable kind of that kind. It's not very smooth, basically. And then um, the po another image in the poem is of course the bird, the os ops uh, osprey, uh, guan guan, and uh, that is basically this part. So um, uh, if you are familiar with the Mayan school, you know the Mayan Ping Sha Luo Yan has a lot of mimicking of the, the geese cry, and it used the same fingering, basically. It's basically uh, creating two um, same note on two different strings. So when you slide from one string to the other to try to produce the same sound, you create that da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, that kind of thing. So I, I basically uh, was inspired by that Mayan Ping Sha Luo Yan to use that to give a hint to the bird cry. Um, 
So that's that's a bird. Um, and then uh, in the poem, there is also uh, 中古乐之, uh, 中古, the bell and and uh, and a drum. And that is basically when um, I start with the loose and free rhythm very slow, and then it get rhythmic. When it start getting rhythmic, I uh, start start every measure, you know, if there is a measure, start every measure with a cuo, and that cuo give you a feeling of uh, zhong, you know, the bell, bronze bell, and then the yan give you a feeling of drum, so that's where this come from. the uh, so try to it's also contrast from the first and second section uh, in getting rhythmic getting kind of more standard kind of a four four beat uh, give you a sense of uh, regular beat and, and that thing and then um, there is also the image of the um, the water uh, so because so there's a river, right? There's a river. So and this is a river basically. River and um, maybe it's a kind of a re very regular flowing river. So yeah, that's that's basically some of the concept. Uh, yes, Marilyn. Well, Peo is reminding me that it's almost four o'clock, but I want to say yeah, one thing. Just as you prefaced your piece by saying that music can be it can be inspired by poetry and words and imagery, but in the end, it still stands independent. Right. That's what's so amazing, I think, about Gu Qin and Gu Qin Pu. What is actually coming out of your hands and the sound in the instrument is unique unto itself. And regardless of what inspired it, that's mm -hmm. how I feel. I think someone can listen to the music and just feel it as, I mean, the complexity of all those fingering uh, is understandable to someone who plays Qin. But it also is understandable to someone who doesn't play, I think, if people will comment. I agree. Totally agree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.